There is a new online economy emerging. It doesn't have borders and it only interacts with existing power structures when it wants to. To be sure, this new borderless economy is in its early stages. A few technologies are making it possible. Of course, cryptocurrency is one of them, but non-fungible tokens, NFTs for short, and security tokens also have a massive potential that is already being exploited as they grow in popularity. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned veteran or just a newcomer to the crypto world. It is highly likely that you have heard about some of the artists, personalities, sports teams, and other people or organizations launching and selling their own NFTs for millions of dollars. You might or might not have an idea of what NFTs are or how they work from a technical perspective, but I can assure you that there are many applications to this new technology that you couldn't have imagined. Have you heard? We are giving away $10,000. The link is in the description. Join for your chance to win $10,000. Making money in a crypto market isn't always easy, but Jetbot will give your trading account an edge. Jetbot allows you to copy some of the best traders in the market and generate the exact same returns with your account. Don't walk into the crypto markets unprepared. Check out Jetbot and start making profitable trades right away. A link to Jetbot's website is in the description. We'll have a look after the video and make some money with your trading account. Hello and welcome to Cryptopedia. I am your gracious host, K7. If you love cryptocurrencies and finance, you are in the right place. Don't forget to smash that like button, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to keep up with all our great content. To understand NFTs, we have to first talk about blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies, as NFTs are a natural extension of both. Let me start by explaining what an NFT is for those of you who might have heard of the term but are not familiar with it. NFTs or non-fungible tokens are a special type of blockchain token that is used to represent ownership of a unique item. While every unit of cryptocurrency or fiat for that matter is the same as any other, NFTs are not. This is what the term fungible means. One dollar is completely exchangeable for any other dollar. They are alike. An example of non-fungible dollar would be a dollar bill that has some kind of unique characteristics such as being the first dollar bill ever made, which would mean it is different from every other dollar bill due to its uniqueness, making it fungible in that sense. Now, non-fungible tokens do not necessarily represent a one-of-a-kind item, but I will talk about that in a moment. Non-fungible tokens' ability to represent unique items means that it allows tokenization of any asset. Think about a house. The owner has a certificate showing that he owns the property. A tokenized version of this certificate could be created, stored indefinitely, and securely in a blockchain network, and be used by the owner to demonstrate their ownership over the property as long as other people or the law recognize the tokenized version, of course. This same concept can be applied to a variety of commodities and services generating incredible potential for the applications of NFTs. Unlike other types of physical certificates of property, NFTs can easily be transferred by using blockchain technology allowing them to be easily tradable as any other cryptocurrency. If the asset represented by the NFT needs to be divided among parties depending on their share of it, it can also be done by using security tokens, further increasing the value of the technology by allowing the division of assets that could be shared if not tokenized. You may be asking yourself how NFTs work from cryptocurrencies or any other types of tokens. Without jumping too deep into technical aspects of NFTs, which would depend in part on the network that is handling or minting them, I can tell you that some of the traits that characterize an NFT has a unique identifier that allows it to be distinguished from each other. They are not interchangeable on a one-to-one -one relationship. It's owned by a single party at all times, and this can easily be verified. NFTs can also be traded in the blockchain network they were minted. Cross-chain NFTs are not a thing at this moment, and they are not a subject to any third party's whims. Their holders own them and have complete control over them. NFTs also provide their creators with benefits, like being able to prove they're behind them. Allowing them to determine scarcity and earn royalties over time, it changes hands, and the option of selling them without the need for any intermediary. Also, the use of blockchain allows anyone to know who owned the asset at any given time, and bringing transparency and security into the equation. By creating an internet of NFTs, there is a potential to change the way the current networks, platforms, and services work, while also returning power to content creators and end users alike by providing them with real ownership over the asset they produce or acquired. Think of services like Spotify or Apple Music, which work as intermediaries between fans and music artists, charging listeners more than needed and paying too little to the artists they support. NFTs could allow the music industry to enter a new era with all the benefits of digital music while, while empowering the artists and allowing them to express their creativity without the need for satisfying a company's demands. This also applies to industries 
hobbies like gaming, art, collectibles, and many others. It's a game changer. While NFTs have gained popularity over past months, as well as attracted criticism from, from many who seem to forget that collecting other assets like paintings is also a matter of ownership and legitimacy, the industry is still young and has a long way to go before finding mass adoption. The last part of the equation is decentralized online spaces that offer ownership, which brings us to video games. Just like NFTs, there was a time when the gaming industry was seen as a waste of time by investors who believed that games were only sellable to kids and didn't have the impact to dominate the entertainment industry. Well, the gaming industry is now worth more than the music and the movie industry combined. According to Entertainment Software Association, 75% of American households have at least one gamer living in it, while 65% of all American adults play video games in 2019, a trend that is also becoming more popular around the globe. The gaming industry has been described by many experts as the tipping point for cryptocurrency adoption due to the multiple ways in which blockchain technology could integrate with the gamers' experience in a seamless way, allowing them to receive all the benefits it implies without even noticing, a must for the mass adoption of any new technology. It's not a surprise that gaming has been closely related to NFTs since their creation on Ethereum network. If you've ever played an online game, used a platform like Steam, or simply purchased a video game, you might be familiar with some of the struggles that the current system has. You don't own most of the content you acquire. Let me first talk about the purchase of video games, which you can also compare to the purchase of digital music or movies when you buy a digital game. You really don't own that game when you pay full price most of the time. Unless you are lucky to live in a country like France in which Steam was sued and forced to change its policies, you are not able to resell, transfer, or lend your games to another person in the same way you would trade a CD back in the game. You are effectively borrowing the game from Steam and allowed to play them on different machines. Doesn't seem fair, right? What about that online game you like so much? Let's say FIFA, League of Legends, Warcraft, Rocket League, Counter-Strike, or any other game you or your obsessed friend is into. You or them spend hours playing the game, unlocking content, leveling up, or finding unique and rare assets. Then one day, the company behind the game decides that they are not making enough money and they decide to close their servers. Maybe you get banned, maybe you decide not to play anymore. Those assets are lost forever, as most developers won't allow users to engage in real-life trading, which just as with those Steam games we talk about means you don't own the assets you worked hard and might have even paid to get. Well, I'll introduce the concept of the NFT to such games, and the problem disappears. Developers can attach the NFT to an account, allowing you to interact with the asset in-game also have the ownership of the asset and ability to transfer it to someone else. Your account got hacked? No problem. The NFT ensures that every asset is traceable and can be prevented from being used in-game by the devs as well as allowing any potential and status before acquiring the stolen asset. Lastly, as we mentioned earlier, it is possible for the creator of an NFT to earn royalties every time an item is traded, which would generate new revenue mechanisms for developers, incentivize them to create more complex economic systems that allow in turn the creation of an open market instead of an underground market that has been created around popular games. This also would deter hackers who have historically benefited from underground markets and the untraceability of assets in some games which was the case with Fallout 76 hacks of the developer room. Okay, that was enough talk about video games for now. Let me talk to you now about the most common use of NFTs these days, and the reason why they are making news every week when a new NFT is sold for millions of dollars, usually branded as ridiculous by most mainstream media outlets and collectibles. While this form of NFT has been around for quite a while, it has raised in popularity over the years, becoming the hottest things in recent months when celebrities like Taylor Swift Mark Cuban, Lindsay Lohan, and many more jump on the bandwagon. We can't talk about NFT collectibles without talking about probably the most popular collectible during the early days of blockchain and CryptoKitties. While CryptoKitties could have been described as a game, if you think about the lack of actual gameplay and how breeding of the cats took place, it makes sense to discuss it as a collectible instead of a game. It had procedurally generated cats, sure, but in the end, it lacked that something. Anyway, back in the day, CryptoKitty was the hottest thing, causing the greatest gas prices the Ethereum network has seen at the time. In September 2018, one CryptoKitty was sold for a staggering mark of 170 k which resulted in widespread media coverage back on the day. Just so you have an idea, the kitty was sold at around 600 ETH, which would be $1.5 million at today's price. Now, three years later, the first suite ever sold for $2.9 million, a digital piece by Beeply, sold at $69.3 million. 
and two CryptoPunk collectibles have also sold over 7.5 million each. Just like traditional art pieces, art NFT prices are sought by collectors based on both their scarcity, attractiveness, and the creator's fame. Just like a traditional art piece, someone else can create an exact copy of the work the NFT or art piece represents, but the value of that piece is based on its authenticity, its uniqueness. Notice that I am comparing NFTs with traditional art. Well, that is because most criticism on NFTs have been similar to image paying insert amount here for a digital picture anyone can download. Well, these people forget you could also print a high quality picture of the Mona Lisa or have it replicated but it won't be the original. However, the average person doesn't need to be or pay an expert to check the legitimacy of the piece they are acquiring, as blockchain technology makes it as easy as possible for them to do so by themselves. Also, while a piece of art can be destroyed on a fire, stolen or lost in time, NFTs are eternal, as long as the network stands the test of time, which is more than highly likely as blockchain is being integrated into every system you can think of. Let's recap the benefits of NFTs in the world of collectibles. They incentivize innovation and creativity among content creators. They allow the works to endure the test of time, allows the easy and instant transfer of ownership, provides security to the owner over the ownership of their asset, and detract forgers from scamming unsuspecting victims. What is there not to love about it? But NFTs are not only limited to the worlds of gaming and collectibles, but also to any type of license or certification, not only of ownership. Theoretically, anything that is unique could be converted into a token. In the future, it could be possible for governments and other organizations to issue any type of certificate or permit in the form of an NFT token. Right now, New York is harvesting the power of blockchain technology to issue its virus pandemic vaccination passport. And while it doesn't use NFTs, it could be possible for them to do so. There are projects like Bridge that are looking to use NFTs as a virtual passport of sorts that allow users to prove their identity. While this use is not widespread yet, multiple experts are looking into that matter. A similar approach to this one would be the use of NFT to provide access to services such as insurance, domain registration, etc. While NFTs usually are purchased instead of rented, they can be used to provide access to a service that has been acquired for a specific period. Remember, NFTs don't need to be a digital asset in traditional sense. They can represent ownership over anything as long as the parties agree on its validity. The use of smart contracts used by blockchain networks allows NFTs to be integrated with different platforms in innovative ways. One of the most interesting use cases of NFTs is in the real estate industry. There are new online platforms that offer free hold over virtual real estate and open source options for development. While many of those ideas aren't new, the same or second life, the idea it is owner used is new. Right now, the most famous use cases of NFTs in the real estate are games like Decentraland and The Sandbox, in which users can acquire digital land to build whatever they want, lease or resell. Different organizations are working on the development of solutions that allow the use of NFTs for the sale of real estate, as this requires the approval and regulation of different governmental entities. In the words of Piper Moretti, CEO of Crypto Realty Group powered by EXP Reality, this opens up an entirely new playing field for ownership. And I agree. Just imagine buying a new house in the same way you buy a new keyboard on Amazon. Sure, in reality, it might be a bit more complicated than that, but the use of NFTs will still make it easier than our current system. Another important advantage of blockchain tokens, which are not limited to NFTs, is the ability they have to represent a fraction of a tokenized item. While NFTs represent ownership of an asset, security tokens are digital liquid contracts that represent a fraction of an asset that already exists and has value. Let's say you want to buy a car with your partner and share the ownership. A security token would allow you each to own 50% of the car and prove your ownership over it. With a combination of assets that can either exist solely online, like NFTs or crypto, or hold the value of physical assets like security tokens, there is a massive potential for a new free market ecosystem online that can completely revolutionize how we interact with assets, as well as proving identity and ownership. One of the biggest advantages is that blockchain platforms are open to all and global in nature as long as a person has the connection to the internet and can be used to both make connections and trade valuable goods in a jurisdiction that isn't bound to any national laws. 
While some use cases would require the platforms to work accordingly to local regulations, they could still expand range of business and investment opportunities on an unprecedented scale. As you can see, NFTs are much more than a fad that news outlets just found out about and are eager to cover. They are tools that we still don't know how can be applied to existing systems. As such, NFTs are here to stay. And just like cryptocurrencies, they will be a game changer in the long term. It's just a matter of how and when they will gain mass adoption. Thank you for watching Cryptopedia. If you've enjoyed this video or learned something from it, don't forget to smash that like button, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. This was your gracious host, K7.